Good morning, mi gente. It's Luis the Boiler Man, also known as the YouTube Plumber. Today we're going to be talking about replacing the expansion tank, the relief valve, and as well as um, air bleeders. So guys, stay tuned and let's go. Let's get started, baby. Wepa! All right, mi gente, we're here in the boiler room, guys. Guess what? We're working on a System 2000 in this particular boiler. It's a gas boiler, not oil, because they do come in oil and gas. But today, we're actually going to be working on the expansion tank. That is the expansion tank right here. Because when they called us, originally the, the original service call was, listen, they're leaking water and they have um, smoke coming out of steam. They weren't sure if it was steam or smoke. They, you know, they called us, and for that very reason, it's why we were here today. So we came over and I checked, and I guess what? They have a bad expansion tank, because what would be a symptom of a bad expansion tank is that they're leaking water from the relief valve. The relief valve looks something like this. It's a male relief valve, three quarter inch, and it's because it's a hot water system, it has to be 30 PSI. That's pretty standard in a residential home. Um, so they had leaking water coming out, and when I checked the uh, the, the expansion tank, you realize that it, what we call water lock is full of water, and usually it's indicated that the diaphragm is ruptured. And it just says when you heat water, and water under a sealed system, or in this case, you're talking about water in pipes, and you're heating water, water expands, and it needs some room for expansion. Think of us about us as humans. We have a diaphragm. When we breathe, breathe in, breathe out, we have a diaphragm. Same thing happens in a boiler system or a heating system. In this case, it's a it's a hot water system, and the diaphragm. So basically, this would be half full of water, and this would be half full of air. Also, we noticed that they have a leaking um, bleeders. This is one of them. I know it's kind of hard to see because over here we're limiting light, but you guys can see right here it's leaking, and they have another one that's leaking as well right here. But also, this missing the cap, so we're gonna replace it. And the one last thing we're gonna replace here is called the triticator. All a triticator is, a fancy word of saying, a gauge. In this case, this is a gauge right here, it's a triticator. So one side, which is at the top, tells you the temperature, and the bottom tells you the pressure. Now, when you're gonna change the expansion tank or relief valve or anything on a hot water system, you, want, you have to make sure, you gotta make sure that there's no pressure in the system. So we look at this gauge right here, and we do have pressure. Uh, right now, it's a little hard to see because you guys can see that it's a little, um, it's a little fucked up. It's you know, I mean, it's full of condensation. It's wet, so we're gonna replace this today. But it's about 20 psi. So meaning, if I take off this expansion tank at 20 pounds of pressure, you know that I'm about to take a, a hot bath in hot scalding water, and we don't want that, especially if the boiler is, is hot. Now, if the boiler is cold, doesn't matter. You're still gonna take a bath because you're gonna get you're gonna get wet, and you're gonna get water all over your face. You just don't want that. So guys, when you're changing anything on a any system on a boiler, especially on a boiler, meaning if there's any pressure, you have to make the pressure go to zero. What causes the pressure to go up, which is right here, it's called the pressure reducing valve or a feed valve. Right here in this particular case, it's a half inch take or feed valve or pressure reducing valve. So you wanna make sure that this is off. The feed is coming from this side. So we wanna make sure that downstream, there is no, um, well, we wanna make sure there's a valve that we can shut it off. So in this case, we found one, it's right here. So you notice this valve is in the open position, it's parallel. Now we go like this, that means that the valve is closed, it's in the closed position, and there's no water heading to the valve. You can see over there, all the way downstream, that there's the, the, the feed valve right there. So, how are you gonna get the pressure down after you close the valve? It's very simple, you're gonna drain down the boiler. So we're gonna drain down the boiler, we're gonna look for the drain in the boiler, we're gonna remove the water, and you're gonna see this gauge actually going down. So when it gets to zero, now it's safe to remove the expansion tank and start doing your job and remove the bleeder and the relief valves. There is no drain valve. I've been looking around and there's no drains. So you say, how am I gonna drain the boiler? Well, you know what? You could use a couple of methods. One method is this one. This was actually a bleeder, because this is where you're gonna bleed it from. As well as you could do it from the actual relief valve. The relief valve, I'm gonna change anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I'll just pick up this lever. I'll put the bucket right here on the bottom of this spout right here. And then as I'm doing that, it's kind of hard, but I do one thing at a time. So in this case, I can't really see the front of the boiler, but this was about 20 pounds. And now it's a little hard to say, but now it's at zero. So as I'm taking out the water, the pressure goes down. Now I know it's zero. So now that I, I satisfied 
the pressure gauge, meaning that it's supposed to be at zero, and it's, it is at zero. Now I can safely take out the expansion tank, the relief valve, the bleeder, anything I want without getting burnt or splash of water in my face. Because think of it a balloon. You want to open up a balloon or it's water in there and it's under pressure, and as soon as you let go, it's water shooting out. Well, the same concept happens in a boiler. So guys, so this is what I mean. is safety, safety is first, because right now it doesn't matter to me because the water's cold. But if the water was cold and hot, it wouldn't be a pretty sight and it's not fun being burned. So that's step number one. All right, guys, so we're about to install the expansion tank. This is a number 30 expansion tank that come in different sizes. They got number 15, 30, um, I believe 65, 60, and so on and so forth. Usually the bigger the system, the bigger the tank, obviously. In this case, you're about to install this. So it's an extra old tank. Also, you want to use Teflon tape. We use a Teflon tape called Monster, which is great. Anything that has to do with like uh, as far as like water, low pressure water, you want to use Teflon tape. You could use pipe dope as well, but you know, this is made for water. So you can use this. Um, pressure is under 30 pounds, so it's, it's, that's exactly what the Teflon tape is designed for. They do have different colors, so understand that every color dictates what the, the application is for. So in case, let's say you find um, a Teflon tape that is yellow, typically yellow means gas. So it's just the way they made the Teflon tape. It looks the same, just different color, but it's designed for gas. In this case, designed for water. I'm a big fan of monster tape, so this is what I've been using. They do have cheap um, Teflon tapes, like knockoff stuff from like China, like the white stuff. It's okay, just gotta put more Teflon tape. I just like preferably using monster tape because it's a little thicker and it holds a lot better. So that's just my preference, but you can use anything you want as long as it's Teflon tape and it's made for water. And to re for reinsurance, I also like to put a little bit of pipe dope. This is something I do for reinsurance. So make sure that if the Teflon doesn't hold, at least the pipe dope is gonna help hold the seal so it doesn't create any leaks. I took out the other tank. Screw on, it's very simple. You can use the channel locks on the adjust roll, you grab it from the neck and loosen it up. So you guys know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you wanna screw this to the right as you're tightening it, and you'll feel that it gets tighter and tighter. It's pretty simple. As you can see right there, it's going into the elbow, the half inch elbow. And as I tighten it, it gets harder, so then you don't have to be He-Man tight, as long as it's tight enough. And also you wanna stuck it with some channel locks or adjustable wrench. All right guys, now we're about to take off the bleeder. You wanna get a pair of channel locks and just basically unscrew this. Now, sometimes, depending on the application, like if you're untightening the bleeder, this bushing is in there and it's not moving. But sometimes, if this is loose, let's just say, if this bushing was loose, and as you're tightening, untightening this uh, bleeder, this moves. So you also wanna have a, an extra set of channel locks to hold back on that neck of the actual bushing, and then you can take this off. In this case, it doesn't apply because it's not moving, but if it was, I would say, hold back so what holding back means is as you're turning to one direction you're holding back on the neck like this it's a little hard in here because this pipe is in the way but you kind of get the idea you hold back here and then untie this bleeder and you should be okay so guys we're going to install an air bleeder it's made from Taco. it's a Taco 400 it's an air vent it looks something like this the same one they have there, obviously just newer. It looks something just like this. They have another company, it's a cheaper version, it's called 67. It looks just like this, and as you can see, it's the same one. So we have a relief valve. This is a relief valve, what it looks like. Every relief valve is slightly different. What I mean by that is they have bigger and smaller sizes, and also you gotta look at the specs. The specs are slightly different. So in this particular relief valve we're working on, it's made for a residential boiler. It's a 30 PSI relief valve, meaning that when it reaches 30 pounds of pressure, it's gonna relieve water or water pressure. So in this case, it's male. I'm sure, I hope you guys know what a male and female looks like. So right now we're about to put some Teflon tape on the threads, something like this. And again, I would say about anywhere between five to six times you wanna put this around the threading. And again, I like to put a little bit of pipe dope you know, it's just my, it's like a reinsurance for me. So, look something like this. There you go. All right guys, this is the new Tridicator we're gonna install. As you can see, I'm gonna show you guys here. It is, it tells you here, the temperature and the pressure. So we're gonna do the same thing. You definitely don't wanna put Teflon tape inside here because this is where it reaches the, the pressure. 
Teflon tape, it's pretty simple. Again, go over the threads. I'm right-handed, so it's a little easier doing it this way. You guys catch my drift. Again, five, six times is more than enough. You don't have to go crazy. And like I say, I always like to put a little bit of uh, pipe dope. Use my fingers to smudge the pipe dope on the, the threads. You don't have to be crazy. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, guys. She's ready to put her in. All right, guys, let's get the old Triticator. Put the new one in. It's just that simple. And remember, like I told you guys, make sure you take off the pressure from the boiler because imagine if this had pressure and I took uh, I took off the old Triticator, it would just push right back towards me and it'll splatter shitloads of water. <laughs> so you don't want that. Let's go over what we just did today. So today we replaced the Triticator, we replaced the expansion tank, replaced the relief valve, we replaced two air bleeders, one here and one right over here. So now the last part of the job is we have to bleed the system because it is a hot water system. So if it's a hot water system, when you opening anything as far as any um, fixtures, this case could be expansion tank, relief valve, triticator, you're introducing air into the system. So you cannot use air in a hot water system. So the last thing I'm gonna do is gonna purge it. I'm gonna turn on the water valve, which we shut off earlier, which I showed you in the video. And once it's turned on, I'm gonna bleed it. And once we bleed it, everything's up to about 15, 12, 15 pounds. All right, guys, before I wrap up this video, like I said, it needs about 10, 12, 15 pounds of pressure, depending what the um, pressure reducing valve is rated. In this case, we have about 10 pounds. 10 pounds, so we also had a bleeder system. In this case, they have zone valves. So just a little FYI, because guys don't know, on the bottom of these zone valves, they have a little lever, and the lever you wanna put in the manual position so you can bleed it. Because otherwise, you know what a zone valve is, right? It's an electronic valve, it's in the closed position. You do not open up these little levers on the bottom, which you look right here. One, two. Granted, this is two different um, zone valves, two different manufacturers, but they all got the same thing. They got a little lever. All it is, you can do it manually or you can do it electronically. Electronically, it's in the close. Manually, you're opening, you're, you're actually opening the valve and put it in the own position. I'm sorry, in the open position. And the reason for that, because the water level is gonna go get to this point. If you don't open up the manual, it's not gonna go through the pipes, right? So you have to open up that little lever so you can introduce water, especially if the boiler is off. Because if the boiler is off, the thermostats are not calling, or they're calling, but there's no power, it's not gonna do anything. So this is your supply. So think of the supply going up. This is your return over here right here and when you bleed the system you got to close this and when you close this you open this valve right over here now what i suggest is since there's two zones here we're going to do one at a time so you open one zone at a time you finish with this one then do the next one all right guys so listen we're about to wrap it up but this is what it takes to be a boiler man this is what it is in the life of louis the boiler man the youtube plumber aka also new york border and air conditioner repair Weba.